going on, everybody? My name is Danny Ferrari. My name is Parker Immense. We are Excellent Sound, and we are back with a banger video, dude. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is the video that I feel like, with drum and bass season being officially announced, right, our pack Zeno is officially available for you guys to sign up for the early access. Yep. The link in the description right now. You guys can sign up right now. With that going on, and drum and bass jump up, we got to talk about Reese. We got to talk about Reese's Pieces. Wait, what's that, dude? Like candy? Bruh. No, we're talking about the legendary Reese sound. Okay. That, now, was so, that was so corny. Was, did you like that? Yeah, I did. <laughs> That's staying in 100%. No, Reese's not. Pieces. You got to take that no, out. No, staying in. With that being said, we've done a video on Reese bass before, but it was yeah. kind of more neuro bass. Subtronics, I think, kind of had some comments about it, about, about really going over it. So we have the actual facts about the Reese bass. We're going to show you guys a couple different Reese's today. We're going to give you guys, like, three different Reese's, serum presets for you guys. We're gonna give you three of them, right? Totally free. We're gonna be showing you guys some of what's in the Xeno pack. We're gonna be talking about some of the early access bonuses, including project files, extra serum presets, and so much more. Again, link in the description. So let's first talk about the history of the Reese base. We did a video on the Belgium laser, and we told you guys the history about that. Yeah. I know you know a lot about the Reese base. I know a ton about Reese bases, right? yeah. Okay, so first and foremost, the inventor of the Reese base was actually invented by a producer that a lot of people our age know, maybe some of you Zoomers might not know. The actual person who invented the Reese bass is a producer that goes by the name of Moby. Back then in the 1800s, when they used to actually produce drum and bass or electronic music. Just getting started. They only had analog synths, mm -hmm. right? They only had, and only had one oscillator. Yep. So he actually got two oscillators together, right? Two Casios. Two Casio, right? Full analog oscillators in the 1800s, medieval times. And what he did is he detuned one saw one way and the other saw the other way. When he was setting up the two synths, the right. two Casios, he had one over here detuned and then the other one was like pretty on. Correct. When he was wiring it up, mm -hmm. he got electrocuted yeah. and lost all of his hair. Yeah, that's part of it too. So like I big, forgot. big tragedy. So essentially you got two saw waves out of tune thanks yeah. to Moby and then this some other guy named Reese, I guess he just like took the name, I don't know, Reese's he ripped, Pieces. He ripped Moby He off. ripped off Moby and took all the credit. That's Could have been true. called the Moby Bass. Could, yeah, but... it originally is called the Moby Bass. Yeah, we right? should just start calling this the Moby Bass. So let's talk about the Moby Bass. I'm gonna show you guys a couple examples of some of the Reese basses we actually have available in Xeno for you guys. Again, the early access link is in the description down below as well as these free downloads for these. But just to give you an idea, you have Reese's that are kind of more like sort of drony, kind of, I feel like this is kind of a drony Reese. Yeah. So a little bit of movement, a little bit of shaking, right? That's sort of like a drony style Reese. Uh, this, these are all in Xeno. Again, we'll be in the pack uh, for you guys uh, on August 15th. And of course, there's like this type of Reese. A lot of pitch modulation, we're gonna talk about that. And then of course, like even stuff like this, which this is our my favorite type of Reese's that we actually try to do it all in Serum. We try to have all the movement happening and then give you the ability to turn it off, but like. Just that sort of pitch up. So sick. Opening the filter. Really, really cool sort of uh, way of designing basses to have a lot of pitch movement. You hear it in a lot of the earlier Skrillex stuff too. Let's start with just like the basic sort of inut is what I like to call it, right? Essentially what happened is essentially you have a oscillator, one saw wave, and the other oscillator is also a saw wave. If you set these down to minus two, you would essentially take this one on the right or left and set it down to like, let's say minus 30 on this side and plus 30 on the other side. It's gonna start doing this interesting things because they're detuned from each other. I think it's causing phasing issues. It is. It is. You hear it kind of going, that's from the fine tune. If I had these both at zero, it would just sound like a saw. No real movement, right? What happens is, is because of the cycles get faster, as, as the frequencies get more and get higher, the cycles get faster, right? So if I just take something like this, a basic sort of saw wave, and I set one to, 30 is just a good, you could put it to 15. It depends on how fast you want it to go or how slow you want it to go. You've mentioned this before, almost like tuning a guitar, like yeah. they're out of tune. Now, if I go up an octave, watch what happens gets faster. That that rate gets faster because those cycles are more. Now if I go up another octave, one more. 
you start to hear it kind of creates this sort of interesting natural vibrato and that's from the actual phasing of those two sine waves that are out of tune from each other causing that sort of phasiness which creates that cool movement in the Reese. I always feel like whenever we were trying to do Reese's before we were always trying to like emulate that speed by using like uh, an LFO on the level but the reality is is it does it itself if you just have them perfectly detuned. So this essentially would be the step one the beginning level Reese bass and then what you can do is you can add a sub And then maybe add a filter. This is pretty common too, is a lot of these uh, Reese bases, especially in the very beginning, they would have like a low pass filter with a little bit of drive and then have the cutoff sort of shut. So I put a macro on this cutoff so that you can kind of see as if I have both A and B going to this. You could do this with any synth that has saw waves or has at least two oscillators. So add like a, uh, like a filter and then maybe have like a macro for the cutoff. Or like key tracking is another thing. So as the actual keys uh, go into a higher octave register, it's gonna be opening that filter up more. You can see it start to open up there with a little bit of drive. And then beyond that, what you can also do is adding just a little bit of extra processing, a little bit of distortion, uh, tube distortion is good, a little bit of multiband compression, and then maybe even one more filter. This final filter is essentially doing the same thing that this first filter is doing. And then this is where it gets really fun, is you can do really cool stuff, especially with the pitch mod. So you heard me kind of sweeping through the actual notes themselves, uh, using a little bit of portamento so those notes glide into each other, really causes a really cool sort of effect with it. But one thing I like to do is I like to have a uh, sort of macro on a uh, pitch, like a master tune. This is a fat nug, so go ahead and cue that music. Let's smoke up this nug real quick of Nodge. You got me? <laughs> okay, so one cool thing that you can do is if you're creating a re-space is you can use something like a macro and sort of put this macro on your master tune, right? So essentially what this, this pitch is going to be doing is I have macro run set to the master tune and I have it set to 19, but essentially when I move this knob, it creates the pitch and glides it up. Sure, you can use pitch bend too, but it's nice to have a macro because you can start drawing in stuff like which is super, super cool. So definitely a good little nug of nodge right there is definitely add a macro on the pitch knob of your Reese bases to create that sort of fast moving Reese. And like we were talking about, because of the fine tune, we're getting those cycles to move a lot faster. So that's essentially the basic Reese. And then if you have a macro on that, let me show you what you guys can actually uh, accomplish with some of these uh, Reese bases that we actually have here that are in our one shots folder of Xeno. So there's some movement there, or you might have some pitch movement. I like I doing that. this. I don't know why I do this a lot, but. It's like wiggling. Oh, wow. Yeah, the wiggling is from, it's not a vibrato. I mean, it technically is, but it's more of the cycles of the phasing of those yep. two saw waves together. Again, all of these are in Xeno, early access. Make sure you guys go grab that. A thousand copies only available. Right, there's the pitch, and that's all created by us essentially uh, drawing in automation lanes with these sort of macros. Right, that's Ooh. that movement that we're talking about. That sort of whoop, whoop, whoop. A lot of times we try to have our serum presets do that themselves yeah. and then give you the option to turn that off. That's something really cool that we do here at Excellent Sound. So now that we had that, I think in the beginning days, they only had, you know, synths that had, that were mono. I don't think they got a poly synth, so I feel like maybe they were able to do this more so with a poly synth when they had two saws available. But another way of sort of getting this, this is a little bit more of a modern way, is sort of using detune, right? Essentially what a detune is doing is it's essentially creating almost like another oscillator. So essentially what we did here is we took two oscillators and we fine tuned them one way uh, either negative and one way positive. So if I was to do something similar, like I'm gonna show you with this method, and instead of doing two oscillators, I use the unison, right? And then I use the detune. That detune, depending upon where it is, is detuning those two saws. Same thing with fine tune. So in this sort of version of making a re-space, right, we're gonna get into the crazy one next, so just hang tight. But in sort of this one, what's kind of happening is we have a little bit of unison, and then we're using this note, right, this note. So depending upon which note we hit on the keyboard is going to move this detune. 
Do you see how it's moving the actual detune because of the knob right here? This LFO is set to zero hertz. This is also gonna be adding a note to the rate and how fast this LFO moves. We're gonna get into that in a second. To make this sort of reese bass, you really all you need is one oscillator as long as it have unison and then you need control over the detune as far as how much it detunes. So what we did for this one is we just kind of added a second oscillator, right? We had this one with no unison and this one just has two. Uh, we went ahead and applied the note to the detune. So underrated by the way. Yeah, big time. The note feature. The note feature is awesome. We're adding again that sort of low pass filter with a little bit of cutoff, a little bit of drive, right? And then we're actually using the note feature on the cutoff instead of key tracking, just another way of doing it. It's actually shaking this filter. Instead of key tracking, which is essentially moving it, because we have the LFO on there, the rate of the LFO is changing based off which octave we're playing. So the higher octave we play, the faster this LFO will move that filter. Really, really cool sort of way of sort of being able to manipulate some of these respaces. Another thing we got going on is we got a little bit of processing. Again, the same thing with sort of a, like a tube distortion going on, a little bit of multiband compression. <laughs> Now this is where you can get really interesting. This is where it gets into sort of the neuro sort of element, I would say. I have a macro set up right now. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on and that's gonna essentially get rid of what I'm doing. Right, so again, this will be in the download for you guys as well. But essentially, if I add a couple notches like so, if I add a couple notches like, like this, maybe one that's going up and one that's going down, and that's gonna kind of create like sort of a weird sort of phasiness. And then I use this LFO on the frequency knobs, again, with the note controlling the rate like we mentioned before. And let me go ahead and turn on the neuro aspect of it. Those are kind of moving, which is really cool. And it's a really it, great texture. Yeah, so this sort of like neuro movement is more about having these sort of notches, either one up and one down, or maybe two up or maybe two down. These sort of peaks, these kind of create these weird sort of moving textures. Another thing you can do is you can add a macro maybe to like one of these. So for instance, this one I have uh, changing the actual position of this notch. <laughs> And then of course you can also adjust the note feature as far as how fast you want it to go. Maybe I want it to be a little bit slower. I like it kind of all the way. This is a fat nug though, it's for sure. Is like if you're gonna use the note feature on an LFO, try turning the rate all the way down, set it to off, make sure it's not set to BPM, and then put the note on the rate and then apply it to 100% to that. And then you can even add it on stuff like uh, some of the level knobs too. This gets kind of interesting. Now it starts moving these levels even faster, which is sort of a cool sort of way just to get different sort of tones from it. It gives it a lot of more, like a lot more dynamic range. Definitely. You know? Yeah, exactly. And yeah, just some more variation for you guys. And then again, we went ahead and added a macro to the matrix uh, of the master tune at essentially at 18, but you can do it just on pitch bend if you want. <laughs> It's super cool. And then what's one really cool thing that we did this time, this is like an extra step, is we went ahead and we added this macro to a high pass filter, right? I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. What's kind of cool is you can kind of create these sort of growly, more neuro-y sounds. So this is attached to the master tune and the actual high pass filter with a little bit of resonance and you can get stuff like this. <laughs> Right, and then what's really cool is like then you can start sort of doing your own thing. What I can do is I can sort of start creating a little bit of movement in these macros, creating some modulation, some automation, right? So let's go ahead and just draw something, maybe something like this. Like maybe we do like our standard sort of growl shape. Pretty cool that you can kind of sort of get this and then maybe like maybe it moves all crazy over here. You know, like maybe it gets like a little bit faster. So I'm just kind of free balling this, so I don't even know if this is gonna sound good, but let's just. Pretty cool, and then you can resample that and you get some really cool stuff. And then on top of that too, like I sent, I mentioned, we have this no neuro knob. Maybe I don't want that. So essentially bypassing this. Or maybe I do want it, maybe I do want it. 
and maybe I'm turning this on and off and, and so forth. So a really cool sort of way, that's sort of just like a little bit more modernized sort of way of the ReSpace, it creating it a little bit more neuro-y. Yo, quick break from the video. Wanna know if you guys wanna get tons of project files like this? plus tons of other project files, including remakes, over 180 Ableton project files, including serum presets, never released, sounds, samples, and tons of other stuff on our Patreon right now. Check out the link in the description. It helps out the channel a ton. We really appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching, and let's get back into the video. Now, this one is crazy. Let this me just is my favorite one, yeah. dude. This is Butter my nuts. favorite in the pack. Butternuts. Shout out Bentley Pixel Terror yep. for helping me with this respace and helping us and teaching us this. This is a really cool sort of way. This very, very simple technique. This is actually a lot simpler than it seems. It's like right? a chompy. It's Reese, super dude. chompy, oh. right? And it's using a lot of the same sort of elements that we talked about beginning, but in their sort of like infant form, back in the Moby ways, right? Yeah, dude. So like really all that's happening here is there's just one saw wave with two waves of unison, right? So let's talk about that. The detune itself is pretty strong, but we have an actual macro on it. So the detune is actually right around here. If I want it to go faster, slower, It's still going to go faster as I change the note. Another cool thing that's happening here is this noise. This noise is causing a lot of that texture that you're hearing. So watch, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit a regular note. If I turn off this noise, kind of just the saw wave with this band reject. Definitely shout out Bentley for this. He loves these in harm. So if you wanna get some of the pixel terror sound, you definitely wanna use some of these in harm noises. These sound great. Just a little bit of a volume on that. Let's talk about the processing, just a little bit of multiband, boosting up the low end, shelving the top, adding a notch like we mentioned. Maybe you move that however you see fit and distortion at the end. The thing that brings it together is this sort of band reject. Band reject is almost like, it's a really good growl filter. Uh, a little bit harder to sort of, to dial in versus like a high pass or like a low pass filter. But band rejects, once you get them dialed in, they sound really crazy. In this case, we have an actual macro on the cutoff. And then as we turn this up, we have an actual macro on the oscillator A, so the octave is going up, but it also moves the cutoff so that it moves the filter in the correct position because our pitch is moving up. And then if you see this, if I move this, you see how there's two notches and it's sort of like a little smiley face, right? Like that's sort of creating these two sort of like neurory filtery sounds that we were talking about before. And the last one is creating that sort of neuroness with the two notches. And then the width is essentially the, the space in between those two notches. This portion right in here. If I change this, that's what I mean by you gotta be careful with it. It can be really, really, you gotta dial it in. You can have this moving too. Maybe you put that on a macro. And then maybe you have like a macro for filth. Same sort of thing with the pitch, right? I think this is just not even on the pitch. Well, it is on the oscillator, but it's not even on the master tune. So hopefully you guys learned something from this video. We tried to cover everything we know about respaces in this from the common sort of just filtered, like, you know, maybe it's in a pop song. They're used everywhere, man. Yep. Yep. Respaces are amazing. If you guys want to go ahead and get some awesome project files and some other sounds, you guys can check out our Patreon and support the channel. Link is in the description below. And of course, if you guys want to get your hands on the early access version of our brand new production suite, Xeno, August 15th, yep. right? It's gonna have bonus serum presets. It's gonna have bonus project file remakes. We've already done a couple. We did the John Summit yep. and Sub Focus one for mm -hmm. Go Back. That one's gonna be there and a couple more that are coming out, which we'll talk about. Video on Friday coming out for a remake that you guys will see that will be part of it as well. Yeah, baby. And also when you guys sign up for the early access, you guys get a free DMB starter kit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's epic. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you guys in the next one. Drum and bass season is officially upon us. A few, less than two more weeks. Get on that early access. Make sure you're there August 15th. Put it in your calendars. We'll see you guys. We're out. Later.